What is going on, beautiful people? It's your real estate go-to, Deontay. And if you are someone who lives in Central Florida and who is looking to sell their home in the next six months to a year, you are in the right place. You're right where you need to be. So today we're going to react to some more information that you can put into your mental catalog for when you get ready to sell your home. And we're gonna take a look at the, the Ramsey Show and specifically this episode, as you see up here on the screen, is um, some of the best ways to upgrade uh, your home. So we're gonna take a look, see what these people have to say about it. Of course, we're in Orlando, so some of the things that they may be saying, right, don't directly apply to us, so we'll kind of circumnavigate that and have a discussion in regards to the points that they bring up and how we can apply them to eventually selling our home. So let's start this thing off and take a look. Aaron is with us in Orlando. Hi, Aaron. How oh, are boom. you? Oh, boom. Look at that. <laughs> I have not watched this video, and that's crazy. Right off the bat, this person's from Orlando. I'm doing great, Dave. How are you doing today? Better than we deserve. What's up? I wanted to call, Dave, because my wife and I would like to ask a question about upgrading our housing situation. We're currently on baby step six right now, and we're, we've maxed out our uh, 401k Roth uh, contributions as well as an additional 6000 per Roth IRA. And during a time of pandemic when we've seen so many people struggling, We've been so um, fortunate where our careers have really, really blossomed. And a, a big dream of my wife has always been to move to a certain area in Orlando, as well as myself, and upgrade our housing. And right now we have... I wonder what area he's going to say. If you guys, you guys tell me your guess in the comment section below. So if they're probably going to look to upsize is what I'm thinking um, is either they're going to want to go to Claremont, right? Um, there's some very, very nice houses and very big houses over there is immediately when I, what I'm thinking. He did mention he's doing very, very well. So there are some locations also in Lake Mary that I'm guessing that he also, or yeah, they also may want to go to. So those are immediately my two, um, thought processes. And also there's a sleeper, there's a sleeper. So there's an area um, going towards Bithlow for all my people that are in Orlando. It's that zip code 32823820 uh, um, that has some very nice houses. Some new construction is out there as, as well. So those are my top three that I'm thinking. You guys tell me what you guys think. Have the ability to save on average about an additional 50 to $75,000 a year that we'd like to put towards making this purchase. We want to be patient about this purchase because there's not a lot of houses that come up for sale in this area regularly. And when they do, they go very, very quickly, and we're just not in that position quite yet. So my question for you is, would you take this additional fifty to $75,000 that we're making additionally on an annual basis and just pay down our current mortgage? Or would you take that and put that maybe in a growth mutual stock uh, or mutual funds uh, uh, arena to let it grow and then use that towards um, paying uh, towards the down payment of the house when we find the right deal at the right time. Dang, this is a, a great question. What do you, let me let me say, because they're making an additional 50 to $75,000 and his question is, what should we do if we're planning on buying a, a new house? Continue to save or put it in something that helps it grow. If they're making 75, this is what I would do personally. I would save the 50 and then put the 25 in a growth vehicle, you know, because as we know, just the market is volatile. So it still kind of hedges our bet. So that's my guess. That's what I would do. Oh, you're going to sell your house, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> so you're going to get your money out of it anyway. Correct. We, we currently owe about 230000 on our on our home right now. And it's worth over four hundred. So we have yeah. a good. Let's just say that. that just let's like, just say your careers continue to blossom and you paid it off. Yes, sir. And then you found the house in the dream neighborhood. You just put that one on the market and Correct. sell it and use that for the down payment, right? Correct. My wife, um, she she's the one that's doing more. I didn't even think about that. Very good point. Analytical about it, and she's wondering if we're better off using it and seeing maybe that eight percent growth on it as opposed to just. We're, we're paying right now 2.625% on our mortgage rate, 
and she thought maybe you'd be better off, you know, investing it there and seeing growth there rather than paying down the mortgage itself. Yeah, that's when you didn't do math. Um, <laughs> because here's the problem, okay? The way you get into that new neighborhood has got 95% to do with you saving fifty to to $100,000 a year. It has 1% to do with what the rate of return on your savings is. Yeah. The math that gets you into that neighborhood is not is not rate of return. Yeah. It's your savings rate based on your income. Mm-hmm. So, you well, know, exactly. if you want to use that argument that she's using, we would never pay off the mortgage. Correct, yes. And my contention is I'd like to pay off this the mortgage because I would like to be able to do my debt free screen no matter what. Well, um, yeah, and, 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 and either, way, either way, you get to your goal. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the idea that that somehow making a little bit more on your money is going to get you to the goal faster, no, you're adding risk to the equation, and I I wouldn't do that. I, agree. I, I would continue to work your plan. Um, yeah, and what he's saying, that's what I was saying, hedging the bet, right? In regards to say if he's making seventy five grand, I would you know I would you know I'm a little bit more risky. I'm a, a younger person, you know, as well. So that's why I would save the 50 and see what I could get out of that 25 um, in the next year or two. And the other thing I think I heard is that you're putting more than 15% of your income into retirement. Correct, sir. Yeah, because I, I would hold up at baby step four at 15% going into retirement, and I would throw everything else at the mortgage. That's the baby steps. The, the additional amount is more towards uh, looking towards the kids for their education for college. You know, I'm, I'm said 15% towards retirement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, you okay, said you maxed 15%. out everything. Are your income so high that maxing out everything uh, is 15% of your income? Um, we're, 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 I, I believe the maximum I'm allowed, we're allowed to uh, deposit right now is it 18750 or something like that. This year is 195 yeah. Yeah, so we we maxed that out completely, and then we started. A is that more than fifteen percent of your income? Yes, it is, sir. Okay, that's not what or, we no, teach. No, I'm sorry. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. It, it is. It is more. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. It, yeah. And so you're putting in twenty-two to twenty-five percent of your income instead of fifteen percent of your income. I would back that down. Throw everything at your house. Let's get your house paid for. Pile up cash once the house is paid for. Beyond that. Um, but, um, yeah, so, so, yeah, you guys, uh, I mean, that's what we teach. Again, you can do your plan if you want to do your plan, but 15% is the most of your household income. Take your household income times 0.15 is the most I'd be putting into those 401ks and Roth IRAs. I do 10 Anything personal. beyond that, kids, college, anything beyond that, we're paying down the house, going to get it paid for, and then you'll be ready, Christy, to move into that other house. Well, and the other thing that uh, that I love that you pointed out, Dave, is it's not just about the money as it is. We're talking about, like, where you put the money, the risk. And so, Aaron, you want to get in this special neighborhood that's hard to get into. You're going to be in a really good position if you have hardly any mortgage or a paid-off house and then some saved-up cash when you make an offer on a home in any kind of market versus... That's the truth. That's the truth. In any kind of market, um, the less contingencies you have on the contract, the stronger the offer is. Of course, cash offers are amazing, but even if you're financing it and you have no contingencies and you can even put a higher down payment down, that signals to the potential seller and the, the home that or the, the realtor that you're buying the home from that this is a serious buyer. I can trust that they're not only going to uh, close on the property, but give me very few um, very few problems when we're going to, to sell the home. Worrying about what the, the mutual funds are doing or, or whatever. You're just going to have so much more control to make a good offer and have a good position for that house you want. And that's what we're trying to help you do. We're trying to help you get in a good position financially but also from a control standpoint and options yeah so you guys are um again you can work your plan your wife's plan if you want to Uh, that's allowed you know there's nothing against the law but we are firmly convinced after 30 years of doing this that if you will follow those baby steps exactly you're going to find yourself in wealth faster than any other methodology and we've actually got millions and millions of people that have done it that are the data points that indicate that not it's not a you know college professor with a theory 
Um, been doing this a long time with tens of millions of people. We were so. just we were just saying as we walked out in the break to congratulate those people debt free on their house. We're seeing a lot more people paying off their homes, and it's a result of those tens. You know, it's the number of years. Yeah, the, the you know, thirty been, years of doing this. You know, when I hadn't been on the air eight years, I couldn't have somebody come in here and go eight years ago. I right. started listening to you, and <laughs> but now that I've been on the air thirty years, there's a whole bunch of That's them right. that are out there that um, that you know they're further along, and and we're also seeing the. You know, the other piece of it, which is the financial piece, babies. That's My right. parents listened to you when I was a kid. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, like, um, it. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, make, o- make Dave feel old statement. But, <laughs> um, but uh, you don't have to make me feel old. I'm, I'm well aware of my age. But the, uh, uh, but the, you know, uh, the thing is, this stuff works. It's always worked. It still works. You know, Ramsey's people are out of touch. No, we're not. We're, we're in touch with the truth. Uh, we know exactly how wealth is built in today's world the fastest possible way and there's a lot of stuff we don't know anything about around here but that's not one of them we we we're, we are the expert on that in in the whole freaking nation so and it's you know it do, it's not um my age does not disqualify that as a matter i actually thought they were going to talk more about home upgrades and the you know if this person was going to do a kitchen or a bathroom or a pool so that was my expectation the 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 best way to upgrade in a in a house so i read the 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 title wrong but this was still this was still good this was still good especially that scenario and me personally a lot of people that i help sell their home is because it's this scenario right they're outgrowing their current home and they want to move into a new one so the scenario that they put in front of us was a really good one um i have some extra cash what can I do? What is the best route to, to take? So uh, a pleasant surprise, I would say. Matter of fact, it qualifies it. So, well, you don't understand modern. Yes, I do, you goob. I understand modern everything. I can even work my own phone. Go figure. <laughs> you know, so, but this idea that, that somehow that the principles of wealth building have somehow shifted dramatically in the past 10 years and Ramsey's a boomer and doesn't yeah. get it just asinine yeah just ridiculous so the principles are all have always been the same they'll always be the same and uh now the vehicles you use might shift some of those things might change but you know you don't you can't use it that to be uh to make an excuse to get in to get rich quick garbage well and you make you always make a good point too don't take financial advice from broke people and half the time the people that are telling you Ooh, listen to that listen to that do not take financial advice from broke people do not take advice peer from people who aren't where you're looking to be right we hear that all the time in podcasts and you know books that you read and successful people that is a bar i live by that by the way <laughs> that's why that hit me you you should be doing this. You have to build a credit score. You have to take out debt. You have to have a mortgage. You should put your money in this. Whatever. There are people that are deeply in debt. There are people that are not winning financially. These are not the kind of people you want to listen to. Yeah, if the financial blogger you're reading lives in his mother's basement, there's a problem there. <laughs> you know? I mean, we need a track record. We- Boom. Well, that was that was solid. That was a, a solid uh, video for, for show. So tell me what you guys think. You know, looking to sell your home, what method do you believe in personally? Do you you feel like, hey, I'm on the side that I'm going to save all my money. So when the house of my dreams comes up, I'm not even going to have to worry about selling my house. I'm going to just use those savings. Are you the person who, you know, leans more more towards the side that I want to put it in an investment vehicle for the next year or two to see how much I can make that grow? Or are you the person that says, hey, Deontay, let's sell the house and use those funds to get the new house. Yes, we may have a contingency, but it'll work better. So let me know what you guys think. As always, subscribe, uh, you know, like, reach out if you guys have any questions in regards to your personal situation, okay? And always remember in real estate, there are only two people that can get you exactly what you want, okay? That's D and you. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.